<laughs> Hello and welcome to Rev Reef 2012. Um, this is going to be a, a crash course to podcasting, more or less. I am Fessworks from uh, the Webcast Beacon Network at webcastbeacon.com. And with me, we have Kurt Satzel from TGT Media. I don't know which URL you want to give. At tgtmedia.com. Well, there you go. Uh, to tell people how to get started on uh, on podcasting if they have interest. So if you have questions at all, anytime during the this presentation, so to speak, uh, just go ahead and, and post uh, a message and on the uh, chat program thing below the video screen, and uh, we'll see what we can do for you. What's first on the agenda? First on the agenda is uh, figuring out what do you actually want to do. Um, you may have the idea, it's like, Oh, well, I like this, and I'd like to talk about that, or that'd be a cool podcast, or I could have some fun with my friends talking about this. Um, so I would say that when you really think about it and you're like, I'd like to start a podcast, you know, look around the Internet first, see what sort of podcasts are out there already that are kind of similar to what you want to do. And if there's a podcast out there that's already doing precisely what you want to do, see if you can come up with a different angle for it. Um, a good a good example would be most, almost all of the webcomic podcasts that I know of have a different angle to it. Uh, uh, TGT Media is more of a like straightforward sort of interview show of, of creators. Um, and there is Digital Strips, which has done a lot of webcomic reviews in the past. I'm not sure what they've been doing more recently, but uh, I know they started out strong as that. Uh, there's a paper podcast, which is more for uh, creators getting to that, uh, starting to make money off of your comic, uh, more of the production, getting that sort of uh, going. And I, I'm kind of blanking on a few others, but the, you know, there's a webcomic beacon, which uh, started off by doing a lot of sort of topics for uh, novice or amateur web cartoonists. And, and now I'm trying to figure out what else we can do <laughs> but uh you know there's a lot of different angles that you can go for so try not to well, copy couple, somebody else a couple of others that i can think of one would be the webcomic alliance they take problems right. in web comics that they have and uh, try and bring it forward to other creators remember that because i was talking with them the other day we're having uh don griffin on the show tomorrow who's part of that and then after you figure out sort of like what you want to do the, I think the next step is to decide what do you, why do you want to do it? Do you want to do it for fun, or do you kind of want to be like a more angle for the more professional aspect? You know, try to get like a press pass to something so that you can interview people, sort of thing. Or if you just, you know, hey, you just want to have a little bit of fun. My camera's not far back enough that I can use my hand gestures. But... <laughs> Crazy hands. Yeah. That's my essential uh, uh, ideas for, you know, it's similar to, to web comics, deciding what you want, uh, if you offer something different, and uh, why you want to do it, I think are the first steps before you even record your first show. Yeah, no, I would agree with that. I just think it comes down to uh, your own style as well. Oh, yeah. If, even if you do have a very similar to uh, you know, topic for a show, um, it, it could the big difference could be um, who's on the show with you or how your personality is. Um, <laughs> just you know, just something different is all I'm really saying. You know, be, you know, because it's like uh, if the, if somebody else already exists and is basically doing what they prefer to either get a different, similar audience or even uh, just individualized. Uh, basically, uh, I, I think the the main thing between us. Uh, in regards to the webcomic uh, weekend and uh, TGT, mm -hmm. is that you know we we we're approaching a similar topic with webcomics, and uh, I think the way that we differentiate is because you have great co-hosts uh, with uh, Tanya and Mark, and they bring their own uh, points of view to your uh, your topics. Right, but we're losing Tanya. Tanya's stepping down. <laughs> oh, <laughs> she's. Uh... She's a little too far removed from webcomics now, and she's quite a new female co-host. You know, I, I don't know how I'm going to deal with that, because she's been there since the beginning. <laughs> and I think in terms of co-hosts, though, uh, with TGT, we've had a lot of 
the creators from the uh, webcomic industry and those that want to interview their heroes and everything like that. So it's, it's been a good mix. Uh, the next entry I have for uh, the, doing your uh, starting the podcast is uh, I type getting started. So it's actually after you decided a couple of those factors. Aside from organizing organizing the show's content, uh, you do want to come up with a name and a URL. Again, this is a part of that differentiating yourself. Again, very similar to my webcomics uh, crash course. Um, you want to try to find a name that's that's unique enough uh, and a URL to match. Um, and and uh, obviously, there's rules to URL. Don't want to have any words that could be spelt differently. Um, you want it to be straightforward so that nobody's confused about is it spelled like this or it's spelled like that or is it uh, a one with a, as a zero or is it spelled out? So there's a whole bunch of things to consider with that. But when you're coming up with a name, you know, just do some Google searches. Try it with parent uh, with quotations and without quotations to see what you got. When I was trying to come up with the uh, what the heck to call the webcomic beacon, it's like for some reason I wanted beacon in there. And there's a lot of things called beacon on on the internet and and, and christian radio stations and <laughs> so i was like ah what could it be and eventually i came up with the web comic beacon and and then that came to be an issue when i started we started doing more than web comics i <laughs> couldn't figure out okay webcast whatever that means there i keep the w and the b uh yeah so it's you know it, yeah. it took a while to, to really find it out um because but that's really important some people will I mean, go for it and they realize Oh, there's kind of a word for non-con already. I better change the name of that, such as Digicon. But uh, yeah. yeah, it's really important just to, to Google. You know, these are all like it's we're not really getting to the meat of doing the podcast yet, but these are all very important factors. Um, well, sometimes, like you said, you're branching into other areas, like TGT is, because we used to be TGT web comics. Right. And then when I decided to switch over to TGG Media for comic, film, music, and game publishers, you know, I had to change the name. <laughs> and it was a real tough choice for about three years. Yeah, the earlier you change the name of something, the, the better it is. <laughs> like the gig cast kind of had that going for it. The name was not, not specifically stated to be like on webcomic or anything. And they just kind of interviewed people from various different creative things that people do and and i think that was probably you and i you and ours issue we we went too specific right away yeah yeah it was it was, it was difficult because you were trying to find that niche that you wanted to talk about mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you just branched out into areas that also interested you right, right. and but then that forward to to the people that were listening so all right i'm just going to go into this next part which is about uh putting a show together um i'll start off uh back when i started the webcomic beacon four years ago um <laughs> yeah i got Pranya and myself together on because we were both reviewing webcomics at the time and, and i was basically looking at other webcomic reviewers uh that were on uh, the webcomic list and I thought, hey, let's get together and let's all do a podcast. And, you know, this and that sort of happened. But it actually got me and Tanya. And uh, so we both knew what we were talking about when we were doing it. Well, for the purposes of the show, we knew what we were talking about. <laughs> um, and so we had some sort of common ground. And I was working with somebody. And uh, when I started uh, the podcast Web Fiction World, because I, I, it was a subject that I, I thought should be covered. And I didn't know a lot of general podcasts about that. I thought it was a good idea and I'm addicted to ideas and projects. Um, I didn't have any idea about it so basically I had to look for somebody who did. Uh, so one of the first few hurdles was trying to figure out uh, a format. Now this is this is a really good example because I was talking with Anna uh, who's the host of Web Fiction World and uh, he, she had found uh, a co-host uh, and then we all started working on how we want to do the show, what type of content to cover. Um, so we brainstormed a few ideas, but ultimately got to the point where I had to tell him, it's like, all right, we're just going to record now, and uh, we're going to throw some of these ideas, and we're going to see how it works and it flows. Because uh, if there's there's anything that can be uh, 
that can hold you back is just brainstorming too much because it's not as you know, on paper it's one thing, but uh, I think the trial by fire, especially for your for your first recording, uh, is important. And sometimes, it, and if it's really really terrible, you know what? You can consider that episode zero and not put it out. But you at least got to practice there. It's like okay, this works, this doesn't work. All right, that's my suggestion. Yeah, and I agree with that. I mean, when TGC started, uh, it was more along the lines of, uh, hey, let's do a podcast because we're putting this website together. And, and then, you know, with, with Phil and everything like that, when we first started, we started grabbing new comic people and started talking with them. And I will never listen to the first 40 episodes because they are brutal. Not only for audio quality, but we didn't know what the heck was happening. We were dealing with new technology and talk shit at the time and everything like that. It was just painful. Like the first episode with Emily Bittner was 45 minutes of silence. <laughs> and it was an hour and a half <laughs> of a show. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, then that comes right down to uh, you know the equipment and such that you need for that. But I think I have a little bit more things before we jump into equipment. Uh, you know, uh, the most basic idea of doing a podcast is just getting on a microphone and talking. Um, if you're gonna do a, a like a solo show, like just yourself talking about stuff from home, well, you've got the easiest sort of podcast to make. Uh, we'll go into a little bit more later about when you're trying to do. Uh, conferences with people across the internet but yeah um some things you know um when i started the web comic beacon i hadn't i actually hadn't listened to that many podcasts um i was listening to the geek life no i wasn't the geek life uh extra life radio that one and uh so there was there was music in there and there was there i don't know occasional sound effects or something like that for special parts uh, so I don't know. I was starting to think about if, if I'm producing like a radio show or something like that. So I got some music um, that actually my brother had tracked, um, and I he had all these like these sample files that were like between 10 to 40 seconds of music he just never did anything with. But they're like little pieces. Like that's perfect. That's perfect for like an intro, an outro, or a break or something like that. So I was all on that. Um, and I had a lot of fun with that. Uh, additionally, I, I thought it'd be a good to break up the show in two parts, so you have like a little break because there there were breaks occasionally in some of the podcasts I was listening to, whether or not it'd be like a little ad or a little promo for another uh, podcast or website, something like that. And so I was like, okay, uh, we're gonna do that. Uh, so this is a lot more elaborate than it needs to be. Like I said, it can be as simple as just uh, two guys talking. <laughs> well, the idea with that was um, I had never physically done a podcast, and I wanted to break out of my shell in terms of talking about what I love. Mm -hmm. You know, face to face, I'm great, but now you're talking with a creator that you admire, <laughs> and it's just like, oh my god, I have to ask questions now. So, yeah. Oh, geez, this is way too much. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's uh, yeah, the, and, and we'll, we'll get into uh, interviewing, uh, having somebody else yeah, on the show too. Uh, a couple of things I want to, I want to caveat here: if you do use music, um, I mean, you could probably get away with using copyrighted music unless you're starting to get really popular, but you really, really shouldn't in general because it's technically illegal. Um, just be like to throw a whole copyrighted song in for a break. You know, that's technically illegal. So I look at, you can look up pod thing uh, on the internet or Creative Commons or royalty free music. And there's a lot of services out there. I use musicalley.com, which I actually, I, there's no real way to download music from them. So I use my recording program to kind of record it as it plays. Um, otherwise, there's a funny music project at thefump.com, uh, which has, uh, music every week that you can download for free um, it's like a music parody sort of site and I also got permission from uh, lapboxtracks.com which uh, does a lot of like uh, track music uh, DJ like remix sort of music 
Um, and I got permission to use some of those for, for breaks on our show. So also just, you know, asking uh, permission. I, I liked, I really wanted to try to get the people that aren't mainstream anyway, because, you know, that's kind of like, you know, you're, you're kind of giving a little uh, heads up to some, some people that aren't, aren't there yet. So to speak. Um, and you know, it's more, it, you get something a little bit different than everybody. You know, it's like how many YouTube videos have you, seen with uh system of downplaying while crashes go off you know it's kind of yeah uh, i'd rather hear the crashes turn that off i've heard that already uh you know, again it comes to originality and standing out a little bit more that's all i have on music i just want to make sure that it's there now, do you find that you absolutely need an intro and outro music for a podcast you don't really i mean there's the podcast The Geek Life, which actually I forget where they went, but they it, it, they went through like it's it has this website has a lot of really old public domain music. They're playing some Scandinavian music, and it's they only have like a little bit of music for like five seconds before they start off. Hello world, you're listening to The Geek Life, and it, and it, it quiets down and plays in the little background. I think a little a musical stab like that, not a stab, but uh, just a little bit can help personalize the show. It's it's not entirely required. You don't need to have like 30 seconds, 20 to 30 seconds intro like I do, but it's already there and so it's already a thing. You don't really need one, but uh, it could help and it could be a little fun. You know, like when you start it and you hear like the first few seconds, like, ah, all right. Uh, but that's my personal taste. You don't absolutely need one. Uh, yeah, I've been working on trying to uh, get an introduction and an outro for a number of years, but I haven't found something that's actually fit for TGT because I don't know really how my style goes with music. See if I can try to find that. Uh, you could probably email me and ask me too, or or ask uh, the Geek Life um, mm -hmm. and check. And you can find all these, you know, the public domain sites, which uh, which have like this old old music, and you just might find something, you know, just thumbing through. Um, and if you need if you need help uh, playing with it, you know, you can just uh, just ask. But uh, I think we're on to equipments and programs now. Um, let's see here. A, a lot of people, like especially if you have a laptop, you're going to have a, a built-in microphone, a built-in webcam, built-in speakers. Don't use those. <laughs> um, at the very least. You're going to want an analog headset or a USB headset because it'll separate the headphones into probably a lot better mic than you have on the laptop. Plus, the laptop a lot of times will pick up uh, the humming of the laptop itself or the fan, and all these extra sound just creates yeah more sound. Um, that is a condenser mic, is it not? Yes, it is. It's a beautiful Audio Technica AT 2020. One of the first ones that I bought, actually, before I got the um, podcast setup that uh, you recommended. And I bought sponsorships for. <laughs> yes, yes, you did. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, that's that's when you're going a little bit more higher tech. Like I said, the bare minimum, get a headset. Just, just do it. And honestly, really. If you get something between ten and thirty dollars, they're pretty much going to be very similar in quality. Um, if you get something that's eighty dollars or more, you're going to get something that's a lot higher quality. And at that point, I would probably recommend uh, getting like one of the blue microphones. Uh, they're not, not the color; they're called blue microphones, um, and those are USB microphones that are supposed to be really, really. A high quality. I've never used one, but I hear lots of good things about it. Um, otherwise, there's Behringer, which makes a pod podcasting kit that comes with a outboard mixer, so you can plug other things in and, and play with it next to your computer. And, you, and it comes with uh, a decent XLR microphone and headphones. So for a hundred bucks, honestly, it's it's really good for the USB version if you're still going. Yeah. I mean, I've been using this for a good uh, 40, 50 episodes, and it's been amazing, truly. Uh, best piece I've ever had. Uh, the other major thing, though, in terms of the equipment, is 
internal to your computer when it comes to the sound card because the majority of the time the onboard sound card sucks um even if you uh buy a better sound card um it's not necessary it, it'll get a little bit tougher if you want to <clears throat> broadcast live especially um it's it's also I, I I've never really used anything but this system before for recording even with Skype because Skype is sometimes a pain in the butt and I ended up using an extra program which was called Pretty May to basically record uh, Skype show uh, Skype uh, calls because Skype doesn't have a way to record for whatever reason Skype may not have a program specifically. But I'm using one called Power Grammar, uh, powergrammar.com, and the pro version, and it records both the video and the audio for Skype conversations, mm -hmm. no matter how many people you have. And for 35 bucks, it was actually a, a very beneficial program for over 100 people that I've been using it for. There's also, I know for the Mac, there's a, there's a program, I think, Skype Conversations. It's the, the nature of Skype is that it, it's almost as though it's programmed because it really doesn't want you to do that for whatever reason. It's usually, you only can, there's really, there's a several pay programs which you can get to do that. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's the way that Skype works with your sound card. It just seems to screw things up if you really want to do more than just talk to somebody. Especially if you want to record it, especially if you also want to broadcast live, which I'll get to later. But uh, the thing I like about the podcast studio kit that Behringer has is that it's it basically creates itself as its own sound card that will handle volume and you know vol uh, speech coming in and speech going out. So your mileage will vary. Uh, the best you can do is to research things uh, and see for yourself. Uh, you have our recommendations already, and uh, after that, you need something to record that with. Uh, Kurt has already mentioned, like a, a software program. Uh, Kurt has already mentioned the software program. Um, if you're running by yourself, it can be as easy as using the free program Audacity to record yourself, um, or if you're having you know somebody else in the room with you sort of recording. And technically, this can also work if you're using the kit that I just mentioned. Which is a free program. I also I use a program called Gold Wave, which I've used forever. It's like fifty bucks. Um, I can't tell you the difference between it and Audacity because I haven't really used Audacity. It's just that I've been using Gold Wave since the nineties. It was a very very simple recording program that was better than the regular Windows recording program. <laughs> but I just used it forever, so. Um, and I really like it. It's fifty bucks, and you know, honestly, I have yet to actually buy it. <laughs> I, I've 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 been using the bootleg version for like you know five years. Uh, actually, no, seven years. <laughs> just because we've always. But it's had it. Yeah, I I, just, I mean to go buy it, but I just keep forgetting. And it's like the last thing that I'm using on my computer right now that's bootleg. Yeah. <laughs> After I met my last girlfriend, it's like. You know, she didn't really like that, so I didn't start buying everything. I bought C uh, Adobe CS3. I'm not using Photoshop, the the pirated Photoshop 7.1 anymore, <laughs> which everybody <laughs> uses. Um, uh, don't steal, kids. <laughs> yes, we are all about you know paying for things and software and comic books and everything mm -hmm. like that. Uh, Let's see here. Again, you can, uh, you know, getting people together on Skype uh, is, a, is a major way that people use to record. When the Webcomic Beacon first started, we used uh, TalkShoe, which was yeah. a pretty interesting show. This is this is mainly so it could be live as well, because I think I also recorded it in addition to that. Um, but TalkShoe is a really interesting uh, thing. It, it, it uses your phone, so you will honestly get a phone quality uh sound with it you know as good as your connection to the grid and how your phone is etc etc especially if you're talking to people you know across the ocean um but it's it's a, it's a nice setup a very simple especially if you're just want to do some sort of fun podcast and you're not you know you're not necessarily thinking about uh bigger things 
uh, you know, quick and easy just to, just to sign up for it. You basically call, you punch in your number, and it starts recording, and you can have guests on that way as well. And there's a whole like web interface and everything. There's it's 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 I, it's certainly viable. I wouldn't dismiss it. Um, but if you can re, you know, if you could go through it with with uh, some better recording equipment and record outside of that, I would highly recommend it. But here's the thing. At least last I checked, they also allow you to download the show that it recorded and upload a better one, like as if you're editing it. So I think at the time. Because um, I always was recording better than it was recording, I would just record for a while, and then uh, upload the one that I recorded. So I got my higher quality recording. Or I think I ended up like recording like the outtakes or something like that, and putting it up there so people would go to the main site. So there's there's actually options. So, uh, in terms of someone that's still using TalkShoe, at least for a hosting alternative, <laughs> as you eat your chicken sandwich. Uh, is um, you can upload better audio quality uh, files still. Quit hitting the key. <laughs> and uh, with that, though, you have to make sure that when you upload to TalkShoe, it has to be in 96 hertz. It will not accept anything over 100 megs still. Yeah, that's that's the next thing. If you're doing voice podcasting, when you say, you know, I, I recommend if you can save as a high quality MP3 or a WAV file, depending on what your program allows. Save as that first. Do it for edits you need to, and then when you got your final show, save it as a 96 kbps MP3 joint stereo. Don't select mono. Um, do the joint stereo because honestly, 96 kbps as is as High quality as you need for human voices. Uh, if you're going to be doing a music podcast, uh, where you're going to be playing a lot of music, you know, like your own music, or if you have the rights to do like a sort of play, uh, playlist or something like that, you're going to be wanting to be at 128 or more. But the problem with that is it takes a lot more bandwidth and space for wherever you're going to be hosting. We'll talk about that in, in a little bit. But 96 kbps, even with the web comic beacon, with its musical intros and outros and breaks, it's uh, it's not that bad. It, it, you can't really tell um, the sound quality is a little, you know, slightly off. Um, you know, I can because I have the originals. But if you ever listen to like an old, like when MP3s were first, you know, being pirated and everything, you get like your 128 maybe. Um, especially when you're hearing like cymbals clash, it kind of sounds like. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. A little like wishy or kind of like under the water sort of sound. That's because uh, the lower quality MP3s have a harder problem hitting those extreme areas uh, of the waveform. Um, especially even you know you get the highs and then you got the low bases, which which I found out for Web Fiction World. Uh, I use music from Lapbox Tracks, which does a lot of remixing and a lot of bass and sound. And after a while, I, I heard it's like, oh, that sounds pretty bad. So I had to go through with song, put it through an equalizer and reduce the bass and the highs. So and then I added that you know get a a higher quality full bass full bass boosted uh, MP3 here. Uh, so th you know there's to consider, but if you do using little bits of music, especially a lot that say in the mid range, it it should be just fine. 96 kbps is really all you need, uh, in most cases. Yeah, I would agree. And even if you're talking for long periods of time, though, like for one and a half hours, two hours, whatever, or four and a half, like I've had one time. Uh, but the the quality there, even with all of that, still sounds great. It's just a pain to upload. Uh, and at that point, honestly, I would have uploaded in four parts. <laughs> Did you not do that? I haven't done the second half of that four and a half yet. You see one and a half hours, yes, but not the other four and a half. I've had, uh, I, I frequently have shows that run about an hour and a half on the web comic beacon, and uh, there are a few that hit uh, t about two hours-ish, and uh, I think I ended up just going ahead making part one, part two. Um, even sometimes there's ones where we ended the show, 
still were talking about stuff that I, that I thought was great and wanted to keep, and I had an accidental show afterwards, so I make a part two anyway. There's there's ways you can try to uh, broadcast live if you so choose to. I started broadcasting live because I thought that's just what you did because I, I listened to Extra Life Radio, and that's what they did. Um, there's Ustream, there's local, there's live stream. Uh, there might be some others out there as well. You, but the, you come into a problem where it's it's usually you re, you can if you're trying to record and broadcast, it doesn't usually like to play well. I know that there's a two computer method for using Ustream, which would have you know using Skype and Ustream, you have the dummy account of Skype to call everybody in. So that one's not talking, but it's receiving all of everybody else. And then you put out to Ustream with that one. Because uh, usually, at least as far as a basic setup, it's it's if you're going to broadcast live, it'll pick either you or it'll pick everybody but you. So hmm. it has to be some, you know, you can experiment with and you can uh, go online and, and figure if anybody else has a different method. But I know the two computer method is what some people use. Like, you know, they'll have a laptop and a computer and, and there you go. Uh, the podcasting kit that I have, like it, because it creates its own sort of sound card, uh, it's been a lot easier. And if you're using Ustream on the advanced properties, like on the advanced uh, tools section, when you when you click broadcast now, um, there's a selection saying if you're using a sound mixer, click that, um, and you'll get a lot better. Going, you, it'll work a lot better. Uh, occasionally, there might be uh, random echoing happening, and I've don't know who's to blame for that. I'll blame Skype. But uh, it's usually as simple as me hanging up on everybody and then recalling everybody. Uh, so there's there's you know roundabout ways to go to go about uh, broadcasting live. Again, it's not it's not required. You don't have to do it if you don't want to. But you know it's an option there for. And a lot of the tutorials for the Ustream Skype aspect is you know. Oh, if you have a Mac, this is great. But if you have the PC, you're pretty much SOL. Well, that's the thing. Skype works differently on a Mac and a PC, and, and there's pros and cons for both. Um, <laughs> such as you have no audio control. You, you can't adjust the volume of anything unless you load a couple of programs that essentially hack the program to let you. <clears throat> I had this issue yeah. with uh, our, our only Mac person. Um, I think on the Webcast Geeking Network, uh, uh, Tom who does the uh, Tom Revor who does uh, the Webcomic Geek and Newscast. It took us a long time to figure out why everything sounded well, not good, um, or everything was kind of off. And so I think we got it all sorted out, and it took a lot more doing. So it, you know, again, pros and cons and, and figuring stuff out. Uh, again, the easiest way is if it's a just you podcast. Now, start answering yourself, that's a different story. Then you have a co-host. My next section is on mastering the file itself. And like I already said before, you know, it, when you're all said and done with it, you save as a 1960 VPS3 file, joint stereo. Um, joint stereo, I just want to mention why is that? Why can't I just use mono? Actually, the uh, the bit, the, the size difference is, it's not there. Mono versus joint stereo, it, whatever it does, it doesn't change the file size. But one thing that you need to do is that when when uh, when I put it on the file on my WordPress, um, I get a little warning. If I put a mono file up, it says, this may not work with podcatchers, or it may not play right. Um, I don't know if that's true or not in this day and age. I really don't. So since joint stereo doesn't take any more memory, eh. Going stereo, and you avoid any potential somebody can't hear it. I've actually been doing everything in mono, and I still get that error message, and it plays fine. All right, all right. All right. If you're going through whatever programming you're using to record, whether it be Gold Wave or Audacity or GarageBand, um, there is, uh, you know, uh, you know, there might be some filters you might be able to take advantage of, like if you constantly always have this sort of hum or this background noise. Uh, you might have filters that might be able to remove that, but you also got to be careful. You don't want to, because uh, in Gold Wave, there's like different selections for like hiss removal, um, and I'm, and it shows the little wave with 
with everything on it. And I have no idea what it means. So I just kind of like make the wave thing less extreme. And then I changed it to slight piss removal. Because usually I find if you go with the full on uh, filter setting, it really screws with the vocals. And then you get that sort of watery sort of sound. And it just, it just sounds like low quality at that point. Um, and sometimes you just need that little piece uh, to be taken out. Um, so I would say if you have, uh, if you're trying to clean up your audio, and you have some filters, just just take like a minute piece or even a thirty second piece, and just spend an hour playing around and seeing what you can get to get your best audio. And once you figure it out, what basically works, there you go. Then try it on the full thing. It, it, just try with a piece first, because you'll save a lot more time. Um, but you know, sometimes you you do need like a noise reduction sort of thing. When I started the webcomic beacon, I actually, because my voice, how I was recording my voice, it was recorded separately from everybody else. It was like me and everybody else. I would increase the bass on my voice, so I didn't sound, I didn't like my sound of my voice, so I'd equalize my voice. <laughs> it is oh, that's so stupid. Uh, I'm so used to my voice now. I don't. You know how some people like listen to recording themselves. That's not me. Um, <laughs> I only hear that voice now, so I'm fine. I, I think in regards to that, though, uh, there's two things with uh, the Behringer setup that we have. Though you can modify your voice as it is. Right. So I may not sound as bassy now if you were talking in person. I'm close to it. But uh, when it comes to the software, Audacity has a wonderful noise removal aspect that I've taken, you know, a little section and then expanded the entire chunk for my setup, or for my signal, or channel rather, and it, it, it removes it all completely, and it's been wonderful like that. And that's also with Power Grammo separating my voice from my guests or and co hosts. Mm -hmm. Works out really well. Yeah, I, this thing has a dial I can totally uh, crank up the bass on, as, as you can hear. And I can sound like I'm more like on a radio show. Um, exactly. But yeah, this sounds a little too ridiculous. Ah, yes, the most difficult part figuring out where to host. There's a few places you can try to do hosting. You can do what Kurt does, um, which is kind of using Pop Shoe as a sort of uh, roundabout way of hosting. Uh, but uh, I do know that there are uh, services like like hosting services that have like a podcasting option, uh, which I don't quite understand uh, how they specifically work. And there are podcasting hosting sites which run on the basis of uh, you get so much space this month, but you get a lot of like long term storage space. So you can only uh, upload X amount. So it's usually enough for, uh, if you're going to upload four shows this month, um, there'll be enough bandwidth and space to upload that month, and then they'll just stay in the archive. Um, and then the next month comes around, and you get, and you get the space again, and then it's kind of like, it's kind of like, it's, it's additive, it's, it's additive storage, basically. Now, where this is good is where you're starting a podcast. Where this is bad is when you have 250 po uh, podcast episodes and you want to move servers it's not going to work um you know i i had there's like 218 webcomic beacons there's 50 newscasts there's 11 web fiction worlds and there's uh like 12 trope casts it's it's uh yeah it's, it's going to be a little bit difficult to move to another service <coughs> And uh, I don't think my situation is going to be typical since I've been fortunate enough to have free hosting ever since I started. I'm currently on the Rampage Network, which has been really nice about all the space. Uh, the idea is, like, typically your archive isn't really going to be hit as much as a sort of download. So it's not like you're going to have all these massive downloads all the time, which is why some, like, like Libsyn is a popular download, uh, uh, a popular podcasting service. Um, I don't think I could ever move to them, even if I paid, because they're just not set up for that. Unless maybe I, I put all my MP3s on like 10 DVDs, and I and I send that to them, and then they just put it on 
the bot, the the server directly would save tons of bandwidth and 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 if it came to that i had to move that is something i would seriously try to talk to the next host about hey would this be easier can i will you do that you know it's it's so once once you're big it's it gets a little bit uh, difficult to move so well, not only that you're also setting up all of the notes and everything like that that goes along with the episode there's a lot of stuff you have to really plan for mm-hmm. i will have to say the easiest way to move things is like if you just for in general is if you use feed burner i've never gotten a feed burner i should have gotten a feed burner but when you have people that try and your podcast or webcomic or anything and there's a possibility that you could be moving in the future um you might just have to use feed burner because people will grab that feed burner file well the, the, the link and then you have the ability to change whatever that link links to so that if you ever move, nobody gets screwed up because they got this one thing already that's your static thing. And like uh, when I moved Webcomic Beacon, um, its base files were at wcbeacon.rampagenetwork.com. And then when, and for some reason I did that instead of putting webcomicbeacon.com because I'm dumb. Um, and so when I moved, all the old RSS just it didn't work for anybody. So basically, I put out a bunch of files that said, don't listen to this feed anymore. Go here and get this feed. So it's a little bit of a headache. But, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, it's just what you're going to have to do. This is also where having a, a actual domain name comes in handy instead of uh, myshow.libson.org or whatever it is. That's something that people can quickly go to. Um, Aside from feed burner, if you just maintain your whatever dot com slash feed, even if you switch servers, that should still carry over because your feed is aligned with the URL specifically and not uh, server sort of address. But, uh, I think that's all I really have. Uh, you can look at DreamHost or GoDaddy for if you want to host it yourself. Uh, there are a lot of other hosting sites that I believe have podcasting options, which I said is like that sort of additive space that you need, but I haven't really had to look at it because of my situation. And for me, you know, the only reason why I've stuck with talk shows I have is because, it, you know, they host everything. And that uh, XML file that they have for that goes directly to my iTunes and, you know, boom, I'm done. I don't have to worry about it. Just matter of uploading it with the actual information of the episode and whatever other links I want for it. For that and it makes things just a lot easier for me because it's one last thing I have to worry about. But I would love to get a, a more central hosting for it so I can post better audio quality files. Well, there's not a whole lot of people in the chat room, but if anybody does have a question, <laughs> are you going to be uh, posting this as an episode uh, on your site? Uh, yeah, actually, it'll be uh, uploaded to YouTube probably in uh, four parts just because of YouTube the way it is. No, actually, um, they took their limits off. Oh, they did? Last I heard, yeah, they they don't have. I mean, it's like I'm looking through. I, uh, however, I'm seeing really stupid videos, like ten hours <laughs> of weapon or something like that, um, from the John Freeman video. Just you know, it's just ridiculous, stupid things that people decided I'm going to spend a week uploading this ten hour video file. But last I heard, they they took the restriction. They took the restrictions down. I'll have to test that out, actually, with this episode, because uh, it makes some of the videos I've recorded from the conventions that we go to and do video interviews, the panels that we get to go to, I should say, right. where they're like an hour long. I'd love to just put that as one big chunk instead of like the Dragon Ball yeah, channel that was into four parts. Yeah, try it, try it. Um, just to off topic, just a little bit, since we're you know at our end here, um, there is a show that's called Web... Uh, Webcomic Beacon presents first issue on the Webcast Beacon Network, where it's a video series. You know, I tried uploading video to YouTube, and for whatever reason, it didn't like the file ratio, and it kept swishing things or something. So it's like, you're just so dumb, YouTube. Because I went over to uh, blip.tv, and it's taking the files just fine. But uh, apparently... <laughs> Uh, apparently, also, uh, you know, if, if you know if somebody wants to do like a video thing, uh, there's also a possibility that it can also export to YouTube as well from there. I've yet to check into that, but there's also Vimeo, uh, 
which is yeah, and there's a lot of great stuff. Just, Justin.tv, which are other places to whatever. Of course, YouTube, you got that sort of community and, and exposure there. But no, when it comes to video stuff, that, that's another topic for another time. Okay. Uh, but uh, it's 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 been it's been fun chatting with you, Bobby. Awesome. And I'm going to be doing this podcast, this uh, this as a as a convention panel. Hopefully, in the next uh, couple of months at the Teen Convention. Nice. I know for uh, for TGT in terms of new stuff with us, we're doing a new uh, segment called TGT Rant. Where we're only spending 20, 15 to 20 minutes with uh, creators uh, that have something that they just want to really vent about. And it's, uh, it's actually pretty fun. We had uh, some great people going with that. And, you know, in terms of convention circuit, you know, we'll be at Chicago CT2 again this year, as well as uh, Fan Expo in Toronto as well. So I'm really looking forward to those two shows. And I might be at. I'm gonna. I'm going to be at a convention in Minnesota called Anime Detour. I'm hoping I get my panels. I'm gonna be at Convergence in Minnesota this July, which is. I'm also hoping to get panels. And otherwise, I'll be at MCDA SpringCon. No panels, but I have a few. Still trying to figure out what else to go from there. So. Yeah, well, you know, uh, we we've been doing this a long time here, and uh, trading back and forth with guests and all that other stuff too. So, you know, just, just this type of fun chat is always a, a blast. I think we need to get started for the next uh, uh, thing in this room, which is going to be a Crash Course to Webcomics yep. version 2, Webcomic Website Reviews. Have a great night there, Fez, and uh, i got to get to my own podcast, and then I'll be back here at 3 with Brian King from uh, Incap Break. Sounds good. See ya. All right, talk to you later.